So today we're going to go over how to clean a vintage gown. It's not nearly as scary as you think. You need to prepare the gown for washing by removing the buttons. There's usually metal inside of the buttons and so it can cause the button to rust and you can get rust on the gown. Um, so we usually bag them up for the bride to keep and we replace the buttons with um, new modern buttons that are custom tea stain to match. I usually spot clean with Dreft laundry spray. Then after that, you know, I rinse it out and I do my main washing of the entire dress in a product called Eucalan. It is a lanolin based um, dip, basically. Um, you can pause it here and look at the directions that are on the bottle. Super easy to work with. You just use the tepid water. Um, here is their contact information. You can also just buy this on Amazon, something like that. Um, but fill your tote up with water and pour the ukulele in and you're ready to go. Over time, you're going to gain experience about how much water to use, how much ukulele to use. This is basically, I don't know, three or four gallons of water and maybe three tablespoons of ukulele. Um, you just submerge the gown into um, the water. You let it sit for 20 minutes. Um, then you're going to just very lightly agitate it squeeze out the extra water um, now this dress fabric was plenty strong it was not dry rotted or weak so um, you're gonna see me handle it um, like I can handle a tough fabric you know some fabrics are more fragile and you're gonna just barely be able to touch them um, but basically uh, you're gonna towel dry it get all the excess um, liquid out of it but you definitely don't rinse you need to leave that lanolin product in the silk that is what allows the silk to retain its hand the softness and the drape now with this product you press to dry um, and I'm sorry, I have my tripod is actually on the ironing table. I'm first cleaning off the iron, as you can tell, make sure that it's completely spotless. I hit it with a quick burst of steam just to warm it up a little bit. Um, and then the heat of the iron is going to dry the fabric. Um, you press it dry, it puts a nice shine back in the silk. Um, you can tell I laid a towel over my ironing table so that the towel is helping to absorb as well. You may have to go back and repress on a smoother surface um, if there's like terry texturing that's left over. I didn't have a problem with that with this fabric. Um, but you just keep on pressing until it's dry. Um, I eventually, uh, because I was going to use these sleeves, the, the bride was not going to wear the sleeves on the dress, I eventually just go ahead and open up all the seams on it um, and lay it flat and use this fabric to cut out to make gussets uh, because, you know, as is the case for many vintage redesigns, the grandmother or the mother uh, is usually smaller than the modern bride and so we have to use the sleeve fabrics often uh, to make the gussets so that's kind of good because we get to clean it better by breaking the dress down and then we get to press it dry a little bit easier uh, by um, by laying it out flat I eventually um, take out all these little darts in the elbow curve also um, so we don't always take every vintage dress apart like this. That was just what this project called for. And you're going to find that there's no real hard and fast process for every single dress. They're all different. Um, now on the back side of this sleeve, there is, um, there's some sequins. And so I don't want to spend too much time on the tip of the sleeve because you can cause the sequins to become misshapen or to curl. Um, so right now I'm not going to be using as much pressure and I'm certainly on this side, I'm not going to keep 
very much pressure on those sequins at all or spend very much time on them at all. I'm going to mostly try to go around them and then I'm going to let them air dry as much as possible later. Make sure you don't bag up this project with a little dampness in it and get mold. You definitely uh, want to make sure that it's thoroughly dry before you pack this project away. Look at that nasty, nasty water. It's unbelievable how much uh, just yellowing and aging uh, were in that gown. Just unbelievable. The gown ended up being just a true ivory. So uh, with this, I'm just showing you, this is where we cut off the train so that we could harvest the fabric for another part of her project. This is how you dry a larger piece of fabric. You're going to layer it, you know, like a multi-level sandwich between towels, and then you're going to roll it up. This is also good if you have to hand wash like a quilt or something, or particularly a very weak fabric that's, you know, a larger piece that the weight of itself being wet could tear the fabric. Um, you can even launder it, you know, between the towel layers. Uh, so this is going to be a useful technique for many applications. Okay, so for the second part of this video, I want to go over how we get the stains embedded in the Alison lace in the cording, how we get those stains out. Um, they usually don't come out with spot cleaning or dry cleaning. Um, a common way is just to snip the cording off of the lace and then leave it. Or uh, you could always record it after you snip it off if the bride has that in her budget. Or, or you can lift that piece of lace off and replace it with a matching piece of lace. Um, sometimes they don't want that done. Sometimes they just want it covered. They don't want the lace compromised any further. Um, now, the way we cover it is with paint. So that needs to be a conversation with the bride and with the mother or whoever else owned the gown. You need to have a conversation with, okay, this is paint. It's not reversible. It's not going to remove your stain. It's going to cover your stain. Um, and it blends really, really nicely. Uh, most people are not going to know that it's there. Um, but it's best used for a situation with uh, a gown that is probably not going to be worn again. And they're not concerned about how the paint will age. Uh, because they need to understand that too. That there's no way we can predict um, you know, we're putting literally acrylic paint, okay, we use ivory chalk paint, uh, blend it to match, we're going to put that on the cord, scrub it in with a paintbrush, we can't promise, you know, 10, 20 years down the road, um, that it's not going to turn that whatever was in the cord in the first place is not going to leach into the paint. Um, here you can see how I thick, uh, how thick it is, I wanted you to see the consistency that I use. Uh, but we can't promise that that stain's not going to leach back out. We can't promise that the paint is not going to turn. But we do use it sparingly. So basically, you just take a short bristle brush. It's a nylon bristle. And you're literally painting on the cord. You're going to kind of um, scrub it in and, and rub it to blend with your finger. Hit the high spots. Also kind of get up underneath the edge of the cord. Um, this is actually the best way to camouflage the stain within the cord um, as far as any other technique we've ever used. Um, I've never had a bride or her family complain or come back and complain about this. Um, personally, I think it is, you know, it sounds scary because it's paint, but it is less invasive than cutting out the cord or even removing the vintage lace and swapping it out with something else. Um, you're still using the original lace. It matches. If it does happen to change it down the down the road, it, it was already stained anyways. So you need to make sure that that's how your client feels about the stain. Um, I just always say I'm here for informational support. I'm not here to shape your decisions at all, but I'm going to tell you the pros and cons. Um, I never make any false promises um, definitely just make sure they understand this is their dress and they're responsible for the outcome. Here's a close up of some of the cord that was painted and you can see you really can't tell where it was stained and where it was not. It just does a great job covering. Please like, share and subscribe. It means so much to me. Help this tradition of sewing be passed on.